And our Supreme Court in 1976, the year you did away with the death penalty here. And I know the stories of Canada doing away with the death penalty here. I know that when your parliament did away with the death penalty, 70% of the Canadian people said they supported the death penalty. They knew the polls. And do you know what defeated the death penalty in Canada? I'm sure you know the story better than I know. But I know it because you became a beacon on the hill, even as our Supreme Court said, oh, we're going to set up guidelines so that the, the imposition of the death penalty is not going to be disproportionate against minorities anymore. We're going to set up guidelines for jurors so that it's not arbitrary or capricious anymore. They're theoretical death penalty in the way that they interpret Constitution of the United States. Texts are never going to save us. A constitutional text is never going to save us, and a scriptural text is never going to, because human beings interpret text. And the story I heard about you is that the reason it was defeated, and I met some of the people who did it, was especially people in the churches who organized in church basements and had letter writing to your parliament. Don't put the death penalty back in Canada. And one of the MPs, after the vote was taken, he had been for having the death penalty and it was defeated. And he said in his defeat, do you know what defeated this bill? It's all those people down in those church basements It's downright refreshing when religious people use their power for human rights. We put it back, and I wasn't awake then. I wasn't awake in 1976 when the Supreme Court said you could kill human beings. As if you can kill a conscious, imaginative human being without torturing them. As if, when the, the UN, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 3, everyone has a right to life. And Article 5, no one should be subjected to cruel and degrading punishment and torture. Is not mental torture, which Amnesty has given us, the definition, what is torture, an extreme mental, mental, or physical assault on someone rendered defenseless? Put any of us in a room and say, in three days, we're going to take you out and kill you. Say goodbye to your mother, say goodbye to your family. Your days are limited. What's today? Saturday. So you have Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. You're going to die on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Every one of the six human beings I have accompanied on, on death row had the same nightmare. Sometimes sleeping and sometimes waking. The same nightmare. It's my time, they're coming for me. The guards are dragging me out of my cell. I'm kicking and I'm screaming and I'm going, no, no, no. And then I wake up and I look around and I'm in my cell and it was only a dream. But it's coming. Not now, but it's coming. And with consciousness and imagination, People live and die their death a thousand times before they die. In most of the cases, by the time you come to the actual death, there's a sense of, all I gotta do now is make that walk. Trying to hold on to dignity. Dialogue with Pope John Paul. Dialoguing with my church all along the way. Learning from amnesty first. Human rights, inalienable to human persons. Inalienable, which means it can't be alienated from the human person. So governments don't give human rights for good behavior and governments don't take human rights away for bad behavior. I'm learning, learning from amnesty. Learning with people as we're marching along the road to try to get media attention in Louisiana. One of the 10 southern states that practice slavery and that does 80% of the executions in the United States. 80%. The real practitioners always been. The southern states that practice slavery, that did the lynching. Those are the states.
states that are the real practitioners of the death penalty. Less than 1% of all the executions go on in the Northeast, even those who have it on the books. And if we had a Supreme Court that had a heart for human rights and the recognition of what it means to kill a human being, they would be able to look down on the ground and see the practice of how their scheme, their theoretical thing of we're only going to reserve the death penalty for the worst of the worst, and see that in practice it is the same death penalty in the pattern in which it is coming down. But they do not have eyes to see, nor ears to hear, nor hearts to interpret, because it is sealed off with an ideology. It's the practice, it's what it means to take a conscious imaginative human being and kill them. And in Dead Man Walking and in Death of Innocence, I'm thinking through the experiences of as many people as I can. What happens to guards when this is your job? What is the costliness and the affected people who have to do this killing for us? They practice. In Louisiana, they practice. All of them. They practice. They've got to be able to do it. So they have a dry run. Patrick Sonnier the first. He said, sister, you call me. They took me from our cell today and they weighed me and they, they measured me. I said, Pat, why? Why are they doing that? He said, they don't tell us nothing. We just figured they're measuring us for our coffins. But the real reason is because they're going to get a guard of his height and his bill and they're going to practice taking him from over here, across here, to over there. And they're going to take him when he goes peacefully and cooperatively every step of the way. And they're going to practice when he fights them every step of the way. Like Lewis Williams in Ohio two years ago. He was very calm the day before his execution. Their practice, this is, this is what they just want to get through it. They become very task oriented. You strap the right arm, I do the left leg. Get in there, guys. Let's see how fast we can do it and get out of there. And he had been very calm, he had met with his lawyers, he was quietly reading his Bible, and then the time came, they came to get Lewis Williams to bring him to be killed. And he grabbed the bars of his cell, and he began to scream, Don't kill me. God, you are my witness. God, I am innocent. Don't let him kill me. You are my God. You are my God, don't let him kill me. He's looking in the eyes of the guards. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. And all their self-control, all their practice to go in and do the job get shattered. And they're carrying this man, kicking and screaming. All down the aisle of this church, or right down that hallway. And throwing him on the gurney, throwing their own bodies over him to strap him down to kill him. And a journalist who got the story put in this small detail and one of the guards is patting him on the shoulder like his daddy or his big brother, like everything is going to be okay. 